Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got another increasing severe weather threat with more tornadoes and damaging winds. So we'll have a full breakdown for you so you can prepare and plan ahead. Good morning, everyone. This is your Sunday update. We got a lot to talk about this morning, so let's get right to it. Let's first of all, take a look at the overall shear, what's gonna be happening over the portions of the Arklatex into the Ozarks as well as the Ohio Valley into Tennessee. That is gonna be setting the stage for our next round for severe weather later on today. But yesterday, a lot of the dynamics really kind of came together at the last minute. We highlighted this area up in Iowa for several days out ahead. But yesterday they ramped up to an enhanced risk as well as a tornado threat. A lot of the dynamics just kind of really pieced together at the last minute there, which really elevated the severe threat and man it produced many tornadoes so far they have up to 42 reports in in, in and around the uh, iowa area and fortunately we had seven fatalities confirmed so far so definitely all my thoughts and prayers i mean the the pixers are just devastating in that region as that severe weather uh, outbreak was over portions of iowa and extended with a lot of wind reports into portions of illinois as well as indiana and then some hell reports is down here in the further in Missouri. But that severe threat is shifting off into the south today. So now we have another bullseye to be concerned about later on this afternoon. Really kind of gets going about five o'clock. So really five o'clock in towards the midnight hour. It can be really bumpy. So if you live in and around uh, the marginal risk for severe weather extends all the way back into the Dallas Fort Worth area. It gets all the way through uh, Cincinnati. But in the middle, we've got that slight risk for severe weather, essentially from northeast Texas to southeastern Oklahoma. But really, as you head towards uh, the Arkansas area into Jonesboro, into Conway, back into Russellville, those are the areas that are going to be a little bit higher susceptibility of seeing all three modes of severe weather. And unfortunately, tornadoes as well. So, yes, anywhere in this yellow and especially the orange shaded areas, you definitely be on high alert for all three modes of severe weather and that rotating atmosphere, especially as we get into that five o'clock time frame. So here's your bullseye for that tornado threat today. And yes, we have another 10% hatched risk. So that basically implies we have yet another probability of a 10% of seeing one of those EF2 or greater type tornadoes like we saw yesterday. Some of these could be really strong. Some of these could be on the ground for an extended period of time. That one supercell in, in and around Iowa was really on the ground for about 150 miles just traveling, dumping sporadic tornadoes in its path. So this is a dangerous setup, folks. So definitely be on high alert if you live in this hatched risk area in and around uh, Arkansas today and uh, south of uh, Missouri as well. So you're going to be definitely under the gun. And I think this sh this threat just shifts as you get deeper into the evening. It'll lift further northeast. And as we get into the overnight threat, you'll have to be dealing with those nocturnal tornadoes as well. So definitely it's a dangerous uh, evening ahead for, for severe weather. So let's really kind of break this down. So here's the setup as we get into that five, six o'clock time frame, I think a lot of the dynamics are really gonna start to kind of merge together, a lot of shear, a lot of rotation in the atmosphere by then. So yes, the tornado threat should start to increase and you should start seeing some of those tornado warnings start to pop up uh, with those tornado watches in place and portions of uh, just right here into southeastern Oklahoma, especially as you get into Arkansas. And this will just extend as we go deeper into the evening hour through uh, the, the Ozarks here into the Ohio Valley as well as the Tennessee Valley. So let's look at the overall radar setup, what it could potentially look like by the time we get into that five, six o'clock time frame this evening on, on Sunday. So yeah, we should start to see kind of sporadic showers and thunderstorms break out really on the tail end where they have that marginal risk for severe weather in and around Dallas. But once you head up towards o Oklahoma, especially in the southeastern corridor, we're going to be seeing a little bit greater uh, you know, storms starting to pop up. But where these little isolated nature uh, features of these supercells, those are the ones that could start to rotate, dropping some big hail in its path and very damaging winds. And yes, tornadoes. So definitely be on the high alert. And then as you shift further off into uh, portions of Kansas, 
Yeah, we still got the snow threat on just on the on the northwest side of here. So you still have that snowstorm uh, to contend with, followed by that very cold air. I know I was in the 20s and snowing <laughs> in the end of the 20s this morning. So it was a rapid drop in temperatures from the severe weather of the threat today, what it is to you know yesterday, what it is uh, today. But as we move through that midnight time frame, there's there's the setup as we go through midnight. So by, by, from five o'clock through midnight, you're still going to be under the gun into uh, Arkansas and and South Missouri here, and then back behind it on the, kind of the tail end of this, uh, you're still going to have to be dealing with that severe threat into southeastern Oklahoma. But you know th this will be more or less cold front induced and pulsed frontal convection down here further down into texas and the dallas and portions of central texas i don't think none of these are probably going to be severe at that point We're on the back side of that cold front that's going to be racing through with much cooler conditions uh filtering in on the back side but that severe threat just lifts northeast as we go into the midnight time frame into the overnight hours going into uh, illinois going into uh, indiana back into ohio here with that severe weather threat as we get into that midnight time frame, and on the northwest side, there's the heavier snow will be falling in Iowa now, going into uh, Illinois and South uh, Wisconsin as well. As we go into that midnight time frame, and if we extend the view and head into Monday morning, this kind of all kind of merges together. So we've really been watching these two short waves for an extended time now. So as we get into that Monday time frame, I think both systems are gonna more or less kind of merge together in a squall line. So you're still gonna have that severe threat, but probably not gonna be nearly as intense of what you're gonna be seeing just the last two days by the time we you know, get towards um, that Monday time frame that, and that severe weather threat shift. So let's highlight that uh, severe weather threat now with the Storm Prediction Center highlighting that slight risk for severe weather and portions of Nashville going into Lexington, Kentucky, extending as far south into Birmingham, Alabama, into Knoxville, as well as Huntsville, Alabama. Those are the areas that are gonna be more susceptible to seeing some of those all three modes of severe weather and some of that isolated tornadoes. Uh, again, not as intense, uh, uh, you know, going into that Monday time frame as you as you were gonna be experienced from that Saturday and those Sunday storms today, but still you could be seeing some stronger storms as far south as uh, Jacksonville and even headed up all the way up into Pittsburgh as we get into uh, that Monday uh, time frame. And there's the tornado threat, about a 2%. So definitely not any 5% or 10% with this particular setup. And, and, you know, there might be a portion of this could extend into a 5%, but these are going to be in a squall line. So once they've merged together, you're still going to get, you still could get isolated tornado spin ups in that type of atmosphere, but definitely not as prevalent when they're uh, more isolated in nature as we get into that Monday time frame, And then we extend into that noon, what the radar could t potentially look like by the time we get into noon on Monday, with those trailing across the Tennessee Valley into Kentucky, going through West Virginia here, back into Pennsylvania here. This will be up into portions of Vermont and New Hampshire, as well as in the main, and get all the way further south as well into Mississippi and Alabama. So definitely going to be on high alert for that severe threat as we get deeper into that Monday time frame. But these are going to continue to race across to the east fairly quickly. So as we get into Monday afternoon, Monday evening time frame, uh, these could be on the marginal side for severe severe activity uh, in and around portions of uh, Georgia here into the Atlanta area, into South Carolina, North Carolina, getting into uh, Virginia, along into DC, into Delaware, into Jersey, along the I-95 corridor into uh, Long Island and Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island here along the Cape. Those could be looking at some stronger storms by then into that Monday evening uh, time frame. But there's a snow swath that you're gonna have to be contending with on the northwest side from this system. That's the colder side. So, so more snow gonna be backfilling into the inter Intermountain West. And then those heavier swaths from you know three to six inches, you know anywhere from north uh, missouri here to south uh, I iowa into south uh, wisconsin here with this this little band going through michigan so you be could looking at you know a good three to six inch swath of snowfall over the next uh, several days and there's your heavier rain setup as well so not only going to be dealing with those 
heavier rains, but those flooding rains with that convective banding. So along with the thunderstorm activity, those, those flooding rains could be contending with, especially as you get into the overnight hours with these two to four inch swath of heavier rain into portions of Illinois, into Indiana, as well as Ohio here. And then next week, we're gonna be dealing with that Arctic blast in much colder conditions for a good chunk of the country. So once we extend past Tuesday and get into that Wednesday time frame, really from Wednesday all the way through that Monday time frame, there's that colder air that will really uh, push further south next week. So we're definitely gonna be looking at this with much colder temperatures of 20, 30, if not upwards to 35 below normal at times with that cold air pushing all the way down into the deep south bringing several more rounds of freezes uh, on the table for portions of the deep south and the southeast and it'll also have a kind of a snow threat as well along in its path so we'll be highlighting and really breaking that feature down as we get into tomorrow's video but what i wanted to really highlight today and be mostly concerned about the severe weather threat that's going to be impacting over the next day or two so definitely if you live in the architects area the ozarks into the tennessee valley the ohio valley definitely be on high alert especially after five o'clock this evening for all three modes of severe weather going into the overnight hours and that severe weather threat just shifts eastward you know heading into that monday time frame so i appreciate you guys uh, watching definitely keep your NOAA weather radios handy and get into your safe zone because these things are gonna be moving quickly about 40 50 miles an hour so uh, be sure to like this video and definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me in the next update where i protect you before and after storm